Hola, bienvenidos a El Overdrive, mi nombre es Román Tamayo y el día de hoy tengo el privilegio de platicar con Joaquín de la banda Necrophobic, una banda que está celebrando 35 años de carrera, así que vamos a platicar de esta próxima visita que tienen al The Metal Fest. Hello Joaquín, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you very much. Th Hola. Thank you. Hola. <laughs> so this year marks the celebration of your 35 year career, which is a very special achievement. Could you tell us about this journey and how you feel at this point of, in your career? Well, um, uh, uh, I, I, I didn't realize myself that it was 30, 35 years uh, since we started this band. Uh, it makes me scared at the same time uh, because uh, for me it, it doesn't feel 35 years, but, but, but uh, it is 35 years. Uh, yes, it has been uh, a, a great journey and uh, it hasn't stopped yet. Um, yeah, there, there have been some tough times, but mostly it has been very uh, great times doing this. Wow, it's amazing. 35 years, just wow. It's uh, it's a really good achievement. It's an achievement, big achievement. So I want to talk about the early days, so specifically to Real of Terror, that was your mm -hmm. first demo. So can you share details about the recording process and how you perceive the world during those days? And additionally, looking back over 30 years or 35 years, what are uh, your thoughts on the band's early works? Well, I, I cannot remember so much about that recording that you mentioned. I, I remember it was our first uh, place that we could uh, start uh, the band and and uh, that there were instruments there to play on. Uh, it was in a youth club. Um, it was really close to where uh, where I lived. Uh, and uh, there was a guy working there that wanted to record us uh, because he, I think he was He later became a, a star uh, himself in in music, not uh, producing music. Uh, but he wanted to to test his abilities to record the music. Uh, so we had one song uh, written uh, when he asked us. So we recorded that song, and then uh, yeah, as we had something to show the world. Uh, we printed a few copies of that one and sent it to a contact that I had in Los Angeles. Um, and uh, yeah, things started from there, actually. I, I think it was 10 or 15 copies only. Uh, I, oh. I saw it on, on uh, Discogs now and uh, it was uh, costing a lot of money. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and 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 I cannot uh, see if it is a regional copy because it only was made uh, like like I said, ten or fifteen copies. Uh, then then um, after that we wrote a couple of more songs and recorded demo, which is uh, official, more official than that that previous one. Uh, yeah, we 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 did that for a couple of years, uh, trying to search for uh, uh, record companies to to release uh, a full length album with us. And uh, during that time, me and David, uh, we spent a lot of time uh, promoting the band, sending the demos to magazines all over the world to spread the the band name. So uh, that really paid off because. Many people knew about us even before the album came out. Wow. Yeah. So you, you talk about this distribution worldwide. In those days, uh, fanzines are really popular and it was the only way to contact with other countries, other bands. In Mexico, you, you work with uh, Mutilador. It's mm -hmm. a legendary fanzine here from Mexico. Did you remember how, how was the contact, the process to work with Mutilador? Because Mutilador for us as Mexicans, it means, you know, the, the, the OG, the guy. So I'm very curious the relationship between you and Mutilador. Uh, yes, I, I, I must be honest because uh, it was so many years ago. Uh, I think, I don't know how the contact uh, came about, but, but I, but, but I guess uh, maybe he saw, uh, our flyers that, you know, you spread flyers in, in, in regular letters when you sent a demo to a fanzine, you ask them to spread the flyers. 
uh, or if I contacted him through uh, because I maybe saw some article about him uh, in in another uh, fanzine. But uh, it always is special. It, it's always special uh, when when uh, you get contact from like for us very exotic uh, countries. Mm-hmm. It's not like I get get a, a a letter from Norway, which is our neighbor. I got it from Mexico, and you know it's very special. So that's that's how I remember it, and you know it's special because it was so far away. How how could he know about the band? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So did you remember the first time that you guys played in Mexico? Uh, yes, that I uh, I will never forget that because. Uh, we we played on a festival together with Destruction. It, I think it was 2008. But the thing is, I don't remember anything from the show. Uh, I remember uh, when we came to the venue, it was really early in the morning, uh, your time. Uh, I guess in our time it was evening. But it was so many people and we came in a taxi and 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 the all, all, all the guys in, in, there was crazy a lot of uh, a lot of people and you, they rocked the the car and i was feeling wow do you play in iron maiden or what <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was crazy and and yeah the guy that was in the uh, cab i don't remember but he said you have to go out and talk to them and meet them, and I was a bit scared because it was so <laughs> grateful. But uh, yeah, we 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 got out of the car and, and and we took a lot of photos and signed autographs and stuff. But that was really special, and it was the first time I experienced something that crazy. Yeah, and I related with this. I want to tell you your music. It's very important for many people. You know how Mexico is, a lot of violence, uh, nar, corruption, uh, kidnaps, etc., etc. So your music helps a lot of people to continue their regular lives. So I would like to ask you uh, for advice on how the people can become a better human beings and overcome these critical social issues, if it's possible. Oh, I'm bad. Ooh. <laughs> because when you are a kid, you... you um, uh... Most most kids uh, is brought up by nice parents that teach you what's wrong or what's right. Um, of course, everyone wants a fast lane to get a lot of money. But I I want to say that please don't do illegal stuff. Um, try to find your your way why you are on this earth to make something that you want to do for work, uh, aim for it and and always aim to be a, a, a good person and, and uh, uh, not a criminal. Um, yeah, that's the advice I can give. Yeah, that's really good advice. And well, also thank you so much for your music because as I say, your music, it guides to, it's a guidance for all the young generation. So that's, yeah. uh, as can you imagine, that was very important when everybody say, oh, they are here. I can't believe it. That, that's why, because it represents something really special for for young generations. So, in the Twilight Grade is uh, it's said to be released uh, soon through Century Media Records. So, can you tell us about the composition and recording process of this album, please? Uh, yes, uh, it it actually started with our new bass player Tobias Christianson, who also played has been has played in Grave and Dismember and a few other bands. Um, he joined us for uh, two years ago, and we have a group chat uh, where we talk to each other uh, on the phone. And uh, he said that he had a demo uh, with 10 or 12 songs that wasn't written for any specific band. It was just music he had created. Uh, so we listened to it, and Sebastian, our main songwriter, he sort of uh, desiccated the songs to find which parts could be uh, used for necrophobic, which parts sounds very much necrophobic. And 
Sebastian and Tobias worked with with uh, those songs that that uh, fitted uh, the style of Necrophobic, and it also was the kickstart for Sebastian to write the album. Uh, so it was uh, he he had written the entire album in the end of 2022. So uh, last year we uh, booked studio to record it, and each uh, and everyone was are in the studio alone to focus on uh, focus on the instrument and the recording of, of your instrument. So um, it's a very relaxed uh, atmosphere and feeling in the studio, but you're also very focused on on do your do your part to the recording. And then uh, comes the mixing and yeah, all of us are involved again together. Uh, deciding what if it sounds good or uh, if something could be more tweaked or something. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much how uh, what I can tell about uh, recording process. Yeah, it's really interesting how you guys are really focused when it's time to to record, and it's not like in the probably when you start the band is just play together and let's see what's what's happened. Now you are really focused. But I'm curious. These days, it's super easy to record an album. You just uh, turn. Uh, you can plug your, your guitar directly to the computer to say something. Of course, it's not on that way, but can be. But in the past, you don't have the same technology as in these days, and also the same uh, same uh, studio resources, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, can you tell us uh, how do you feel at this point with uh, uh, with all this uh, new uh, technology in your hand? Opposite to the first days when you have maybe you know uh, a mixer with five or six channels. So how do you feel at this point, thirty five thirty five years later? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I, I see your point, and and uh, I I think like this. It's of course it was a lot harder for for us back back in the day to to both spread our music. Uh, it took much longer time to you know send the cassette to 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 your country, for instance. Uh, and uh, if a uh, magazine would uh, would like to interview you, 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 he wrote a letter, and then it came to me, and I was maybe busy for two or three days, and then I took five days to write it, and then send it back. You know, it it took forever. You know, and um, recording music, uh, yeah, you 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 sort of you you had to go to a studio to record if you wanted to record professionally. Uh, you could always put a, a cassette player uh, and and, pl- and push rec and play and and record, but the sound uh, usually didn't turn out so good. Uh, so that's why it's called rehearsal tapes um, back in the day. Uh, but today, uh, you can you can uh, buy uh, you can buy program and have your own studio in your home. Uh, it's very efficient and it's uh, it's really up to how how much do you put into this uh, to make your uh, recording um, and today you can well, well, there's platforms uh, to put up your music for free and sometimes you have to pay but you you can easily spread your music uh, easier that, that than we could uh, back in the day so that's that's positive. But the negative thing is that that there's so many bands now. Uh, it's hard to you know, yeah, get noticed. Uh, exactly, because everyone wants to be on YouTube or Spotify or whatever platform. Uh, but there are millions of other bands, uh, so it's I, I guess it's harder in that way to reach out. But the the you have the ability to to put out your music much easier than than we had. Uh, yeah, Pro- probably uh, the answer it's uh, or the the key is the live shows. If you are a really good musician and you play a really good show live, that's the key. Maybe that the people start to notice that you are a different than other bands. I, well, mm-hmm. that's my opinion because, as you say, it's really complicated. This at this moment, it's a lot of bands. But we're talking about live shows on April twelfth. Uh, you will be at the back at the metal at the metal fest alongside bands like Anthrax, Overkill, and Mayhem. 
So how does it feel to return a country that loves you passionately? And there, there is there any surprise for the set list uh, that you will play or what we can expect from that show? Uh, yeah, it's, it, it will be wonderful to come back to Mexico. Uh, we already long for <laughs> April to come. Uh, and I also found out that we're going to play in a stadium. It's the biggest uh, venue that we have ad ever played on. And it's fantastic that it will be in Mexico. Uh, yeah, again, it was uh, it is uh, full of uh, other great acts. So if I have time, I will watch as much as I can of the other bands, Anthrax, Mayhem, Overkill. Um, and if if I say what songs we're going to play, it's not a surprise. <laughs> but oh. what what I can say is that. Okay, we don't have the longest set because we are not the headliner. But we will try to make a very good mix, uh, both from very old songs to the new songs, of course, because the new album is out. But have a great mix of songs that uh, most of you will uh, enjoy, I think. Great. Well, we can wait. We can wait to see you guys. Uh, it will be a pleasure. So... Joaquin, congratulations for 35 years of career. Uh, Thank and you. thanks so much for, for all your music, all your support to this underground scene, metal scene in Mexico. So any final words for your fans here in Mexico or in Latin America in general? Uh, I, like I said, it, 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 it's uh, a pleasure to, to have fans in Mexico. And it's, it's a wonderful feeling to know that we are coming to Mexico very soon. Uh, And uh, we have a crazy time together. <laughs>